Good evening. Thank you once again for joining me. And we will be uh, spending time around the Word of God, extracting life principles from the Bible, as we always <coughs> say and endeavor to do. Um, I hope you, you can still remember last week's session and always keep it in mind as we talk about proceeding word and bearing fruit. The consequence in our lives of proceeding word is that it would bring forth Christ. It would bring forth fruit, and that fruit in and through us is the nature of Christ himself. So um, proceeding word has no function uh, and it's of no gain to us if it does not produce fruit, if it does not have the end consequence of the seed that Jesus talked about so much in, um, in the parable of the sower, which, is called, which he calls the parable of all parables. Um, the parable of the sower <coughs> talks about four groups of hearers. And we've been uh, doing quite a lot on that, and especially with the last group, where Jesus says two interesting things. He says this group, this last group, will keep the word in a good and noble heart. So we've talked about keeping. We've talked about good and noble. Um, as we saw examples of people in, uh, in, in the book of Acts, people of Berea and later on of Thessalonica. And then he also says they, they keep it in a good and noble heart and they produce or bear fruit with patience and endurance or patience, which is also translated as endurance. So at the moment, we're looking at, because we want to get to the mechanics of this thing, um, we've talked about preparing the heart opening the heart, preparing um, the life for the word, receiving the word. But where does patience come in and what role does it play? And we've looked at that, we started looking at that last week. And we saw that patience um, mainly has this character of, characteristic of keeping on. Keeping on, um, not quitting. With patient endurance, it's got the meaning of patience, but also the meaning of endurance. Uh, to not fade, to still be there tomorrow, to remain. That was the main um, connotation of this word, is the meaning of remaining, remaining. <clears throat> so um, they keep it on the good ground, or the, or the, the seed falls in the good ground, an honest and good ground uh, of heart, uh, keep the word after hearing it, and they bring forth fruit with patience. So the process of bearing fruit is kept going by patience. The process of bearing fruit is kept going by patience. It's not an automatic process. It's not an automatic process. There will still be effort. There will still be effort. Um, there will still be um, adverse uh, circumstances. There will still be enemies coming against you if you really want to bear fruit. And uh, after all that is done, patience and endurance. But it's not going to be a smooth ride. We talked about that um, in essence last week. <coughs> Excuse me. So the word patience mainly has the meaning of to endure, to endure. The end is to bring forth fruit and coming to the full stature of Christ. That is the end place uh, where we are heading. That is what Christ has predestined us for, to come to the full image of his, the full stature of his Son, the image of the Son of God. And there are so many scriptures about these things um, in the New Testament. Our end purpose, our end station of arrival 
is that place where we will come to the full stature of Christ. And that, that we call, or that we talk about the end many times, it's a full stature of Christ. And to get there, that is the purpose of proceeding word, is word that will bring forth fruit, that will come like seed and bear forth the fruit of Christ, bring forth Christ in our lives. That is the main purpose. Now, we saw how uh, um, people today, uh, the, the, the subject of endurance is not very popular in our day. We've created uh, for ourselves a world of, of uh, comfort where everything is at quick hand. Anything you need is quick. Um, most, <laughs> even, <laughs> even most food products today are in the quick version. You can have a, a quick way of making porridge. You can have a quick way of, of uh, getting yourself some noodles. You can have a quick way. Everything is, is instant. Instant is a very great word in, in, in the food industry, industry today. Why? It saves people time and it saves them effort. So now the word comes and tells us that there's no quick way in bearing fruit. Bearing fruit will have to be accompanied by patience. Patient endurance. There's no quick way of bearing fruit. Uh, you have to be there tomorrow, the day after, the day after. It's, it's going to an end point. It's coming to a finish. And therefore, there's no quick, um, quick solution in this. So, it, it actually and, and totally uh, screams against the world we've created, the world of comfort. This is a world of discomfort. Uh, in the sense, if I can say that, because God wants to grow character, and we're going to look at that today. God wants to grow His character in us. And to do that is not a quick way. To have character built in, to have your, your uh, person changed towards the image or, or to transformed into the image of Christ. That really takes time. And it has to has to be accompanied by patience. It's not a quick fix. It cannot be. The things of the kingdom is not a quick fix because the kingdom is like seed. Seed never gives you the end product overnight. In fact, I think it's a, a, a peach tree, if I'm not mistaken. They say that takes seven years before it gives you the first fruit. Seven years. And so others take longer and others shorter. But it's, it's, a, it's a marathon. It's not a race, a short race. Um, it's a marathon. It's a, it's a building up, a building into yourself. It's an infusion of the character of Christ into your person. And that can only be done over time. That can only be done by us overcoming. That's why the word is there. And is so much used in, in the in especially in, in Revelation where it talks to the seven churches of Asia. Um, re, uh, overcoming, overcoming is a central theme in the Bible. If we have a, a life of quick fix and everything is at our fingertips, what do we overcome? Some people only need to overcome their remote control, and. Um, Maybe that's the biggest enemy. <laughs> but but <coughs> to get the character of Christ, to get that built into you is something is, is overcoming, overcoming many things, building character into us. And God is busy with us. If you avail yourself to Christ and the word and the spoken word, this proceeding word like Mary did, and say, let it be to me according to your word. Let it be done unto me according to your word. Then it's going to take time. God is going to place you in situations where your character 
I, I quoted the verse last, last uh, week in, 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 in um, Proverbs where it says, iron, As iron sharpens iron, so the one person sharps the other. Um, iron sharpening iron is not a quick fix. It's not a nice thing. It's not the ideal circumstances that you would choose for yourself. But there's no growth of character outside of that. You have to be placed in situations where your comfort zone uh, is attacked. Uh, I, I saw something the other day which says something like this. Um, a comfort zone is a nice place, but nothing grows there. A comfort zone is a nice and pleasant place to be, but nothing will ever grow there. And that is so typical. We, we have our comfort zone because that is where we can be restful and be at comfort, as the word says. But things will never change there because things only change by challenge coming to us. We, we know the story of, of the oyster uh, and, and how it forms this precious pearl uh, through, through a, a, a grain of sand or something coming in there and there's a lot of of um, uh, things going on there which is which is uh, which is actually hard to endure for this precious pearl to come to the fore and be formed and so it is with us as well that's the way God has made us that's the way our wonderful heavenly father has planned for us because if character can be grown, if character can be formed, we can come to the full image and stature of Jesus Christ. So um, uh, last, week's, last week's session was very, very important if we would ever come to the place of bearing fruit and bringing forth Christ. It will be accompanied <coughs> by trials and sufferings. I'm going to show you today what the word says about these things. Um, but for people who really, uh, who are loyal to, to faith and piety, that's what the Bible says. Uh, and the, the commentaries say in the New Testament, uh, it's a characteristic of a man. This word remaining or patience is a characteristic of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. So even the greatest trials and sufferings cannot swerve him. They will still be there at the end. Nothing is going to take them away. Uh, nothing is going to set them apart or let them quit or go on a, on a different way. Today, today, minor things, minor things take people off track. Minor little things. People are so uh, easy to take, to be offended. To be offended. So easy. You know, it's, it's like, uh, I don't know what you should call it, if you should call it the spirit of our day or whatever. But, but it's, it's quick. It's very quick. And people are offended. And they just give up or they go their own route. Why? Where do they go to when they get offended? They go to their comfort zone. And their comfort zone says, I will not go to trouble to stand in relationships. Why do I have to be in a relationship if someone grinds me the whole time? Or if someone hurts me? Or if someone, we talked about the work situation. I think you can remember, why must I be in that? I don't need this. <laughs> I, <laughs> I hear people, so often I hear people say, I don't need this. You do. You do need it. God wants to form himself in you and through you. And you need that for this purpose to be done. You need that. Don't say, I don't need this and walk away. Because you're going to start all over again. And there's so many people, they start all over again. They go around the mountain every time. They've done so many laps already. And they, I don't know when they're going to stop. Because every time they have to start afresh. Because they can't work through hassles. 
They can't work through troubles. They can't work through adverse circumstances. Uh, the easiest is to walk away. Easiest is to walk away and say, I don't need this, or I don't like this. So character is never going to be formed in a life like that. Character is going to be formed where people have grit and they stick it out. And they say, man, I'm going to make the best of this. I'm going to find God's purpose in this. I told you last week, first make sure that God put you where you are. That's the number one. And if you say, yes, God put me here, then you've got no excuse to quit. No excuse to quit. Um, all right, I'm just touching on a few things to refresh uh, our minds. You have to bear fruit with patience and endurance because there will be trials. There will be trials. Many times you will feel like giving up because there are just simply too many ha ha hassles. But the question we asked is, <clears throat> can you give up on bearing fruit? Can you give up on God's purposes? You know, people don't, don't realize what they do. If I quit and I just give up and I say, this is not for me, then I'm actually saying, okay, God, take back your package. Take back your package. I'm not interested. It's not working for me. But at the next place, you want to engage God again. But you've just given his package back to him and saying, it's not for me. I don't know if people really uh, see what they do. <coughs> um, when they when they do when they when they do this kind of thing, whether they really um, can see how they must hurt the, the heart of God, so it's going to take effort to bring fruit to the fore, to bear fruit. It's going to bring about trials in your life. You might feel like giving up many hassles, etc. Just think of this question. Can you give up on bearing fruit? Can you give up on God's purposes because you don't like it? It's not about all the things in your life. It's about bringing the aroma of Christ into the situation and into this world. Um, <clears throat> can you just leave and... Well, these are the questions we asked. Can you just leave and walk away from where God put you? You have to make out these things, whether God put you there. Otherwise, you will never be steadfast. That's the other word that comes to the fore quite often, steadfast. Steadfastness. Am I here by God's doing? Can I bear fruit here? Uh, when the trials come, as in the second and third groups of, of the parable of the sower, and the sun gets hot, <clears throat> then God wants patience and endurance to grow in you and come forth through you, through us. So, so patience and endurance only comes through process. We said you cannot fast for patience and endurance. It comes through process. And I'm going to show you if we get a time today and maybe next week work through some, some scriptures where this is so clearly shown. It's so wonderful to work through these things and see how God has put the process in place of getting to the, the purpose. Iron sharpens iron. We've said already, process brings forth patience and endurance. God's want, God wants you to go through it to bring forth His nature in and through you. Now, last week we talked about uh, the refiner of silver. That was the word that I was looking for. And I'm just going to read to you uh, this scripture in Malachi 3. Malachi 3. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. That's what the script, the, the, the um, chapter starts with. Now listen. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner 
and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi. Now in the Old Testament times, that was the priestly, uh, and we know what it means to us today, every child of him. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. Listen to this, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. That they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Let me just read this again. Verse 2, but who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. Now somebody said, um, said it this way, there will be many comings of the Lord before he physically comes back. Jesus Christ is going to return physically. He said that, or they said that to the disciples when uh, he was taken up. But before that, there will be many situations where Christ um, comes. And now, uh, now, please understand me, I'm talking about this. In this, let's say this work situation of yours that we are talking about, if we can take that example, where you feel things are just against me and I uh, I feel like quitting and this, does God really work this in my life? Why do I have to go through all of this? In that, that is a place where Christ is coming to you, where Christ wants to be manifested. He's coming as a refiner and a purifier of silver. So they say, who can endure the day of his coming who can stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire and like laundress soap so so christ comes and the situation in which he wants to grow you and bring himself forth show himself that situation is going to be like a refiner's fire that's why you have all the troubles that you have it's not to grind you it's not to put you down it's to get you through, to show him, to bring him forth in the situation that, uh, where you are. So he comes and the situation feels like a refiner's fire. And now the, this question is asked, who can endure the day of his coming? Who can endure the day? Now, and now we say that before he's coming back physically, he comes in many situations, but <laughs> we don't see it. Because sometimes we get offended, sometimes we just, we are not interested in bearing fruit, sometimes, you know, all of these things. And, and there are different outcomes to this. But Christ, listen, Christ wants to come in your situation. Christ wants to reveal himself to the people with whom you work. Christ wants to reveal himself to the people even who are over you. Christ wants to reveal himself to the person who is giving you trouble. Just think of that. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about him. It's about his purposes. He wants to reveal himself in the situation where you are. And this is really, if we think of this, then, then you just have to say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for thinking about myself and not thinking about you. It's all about the day you came to Christ. You said, Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. So you actually said, it's not about me. It's all about you. It's all about you. That is what we are committed to. That is what, that is what we have sold out to. We have laid down our lives. We have laid down our lives. We didn't die physically. But we lay down our lives so that Christ can be manifested. We have laid down our lives so that Christ can be manifested. That is what we're doing here. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. You know, people often say, can a God of love do this and this and this and this? And they have many things. Now, 
imagine we, we think of God, this wonderful God who loves us so much. You know, when you talk to a sinner uh, and you're on, on your way to leading him to Christ, you talk about God's love for him and all of these things. But later on in life, he has to learn that God is a refiner of silver and a purifier of silver. And I told you last week that they asked a, a, a refiner of silver, they asked him, when do you know when the silver is ready, when you can take it out of the furnace? And he says, when I can see my image in the silver. When I can see my image in the product that I'm forming, then I know it's ready. I can take it out. So now uh, you came to Christ, you were aware of God's love. It was so wonderful. But growing up, that cannot grow you into character and into Christ-likeness. To grow up into Christ-likeness, you now also have to feel the flame. You have to feel circumstances not going your way. You have to feel trials and tribulations. You have to go through that. You have to overcome in order to get to the end purpose of God. So um, may God help us and may God really be with us in getting to this point. I really pray that you will stick it out. Stick it out. Patient endurance or patience and endurance, whatever way you want to look at it, Jesus says, those are the things, those are the ingredients that you need to bear fruit. Those are the things that you're going to need to come to the full stature of Christ. Patience and endurance. Why? Because your circumstances are going to feel as though you've been put into the fire. It might be like a fire to you. It might be you know, these things can just grab your mind and it's all that you can work with and think of and so on. It's, uh, it's, it's really not nice. It's really not nice. But hold on. Jesus wants you to overcome. He says to him in Revelation, he says to him that overcomes, I will let him sit with me on my throne as I sit with the Father on his throne. What a wonderful promise. God wants you. God wants you in victory. God wants you to be an overcomer. But sometimes you're going to experience him as a refiner and a purifier of silver. That is one of the ways that he's going to come to us. Because we have to be formed into the image and likeness of his son. That's what we have to show in these circumstances. If we walk away, who's going to do it? That's why Isaiah said, uh, God said through Isaiah, whom shall I send and who shall go? So God has found you and he's put you there and he wants to use you for his purposes. But what is your reaction? What is your reaction? Are you thinking of yourself and saying, I, I don't think this is for me, I'm going to quit? Or are you thinking about him and his purposes? Did you ever say, Jesus is Lord? If you did say that, and you should have said that, that's the ground on which we come to him. We sell out. We lay down our lives. If, you, if we ever said that, it's time to put your money where your mouth is. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time around your word. And may you really lead us into the deeper things of your purposes. God, that we will not choose our comfort zone and our comfort but we will choose what you want to do, even if it take us, takes us through times of great discomfort. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We see you again next week.